Does it mean that heaven and earth will pass away? Will pass away? According to the Bible, the Bible tells us that heaven and earth will pass away. Uh, it says in Matthew 24, 35, and confirm so much that heaven and earth shall pass away. Hey, Alex! Hey, I'm recording, guys. Um, heaven and earth shall pass away. Okay? So, the Bible is very clear about this. And it continues explaining how much the words of God uh, in the context of the end time prophecies and eternal nature it means that these words of God, they are eternal. Okay? Are you seeing the point? Now, this one is basically trying to mean that uh, trusting Jesus is wiser than trusting anything in this world. Okay? Trusting Jesus is wiser. Why? Because his words are eternal. Now, I want to explain to you what it means that his words will not pass away. You have to understand that Jesus also refers to the passing away of heaven and earth, okay? In uh, Matthew uh, 5.18 and also in Revelation 21 verse 1, remember John the Revelator, where he writes of a new heaven and a new earth in the eternal state, okay? Uh, in this time, he's trying to explain that he's, he's seen that first heaven and the first earth which has passed away. And uh, he explains this in uh, in detail. Just go and check who is, who is at the door. So, in the book of Isaiah 65, 17, he tells us about this. Uh, Isaiah uh, 5, verses uh, 17, he tells us about this. It says, When shall the lambs feed after their manner, and the waste places of the fat ones shall strangers eat? This is talking about the time when this earth that we are living will have passed away. The world will be so different. So different. Okay? So different. Because even it continues and tells, tells us, Who unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity and sin, as it were with a cut rope, that say, let him, let him make speed and hasten his work, that we may see it, and let counsel of the Holy One draw Israel... Uh, draw nigh and come that we may know of it. People who are thinking about the world. You're thinking about this world and the Bible says this world will pass and things will be different. Okay? Things will be different. Let's also see something else here. In Second Peter, what the Bible says. Second Peter uh, 3 verse 13. Okay? 3 verse 13. <clears throat> it says, excuse me, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. So you have to understand that uh, when the Bible talks about to pass away or to disappear or to be no more, this refers to the physical heaven and the physical earth. And this material world and all that it contains. But doesn't mean the people or the souls and the spirits of the people who inhabit those places. Of the, it, it doesn't mean that. Scripture is clear that people would outlast the current material universe. <clears throat> okay? They will outlast the current material universe. And... and uh, and uh, also, some in, in some state of eternal bliss, they will come to some state of eternal bliss and uh, some state of eternal misery, either heaven or hell. And that the current universe will be replaced by another that we know, uh, th that we know, which will be either a new heaven for all the believers, and, uh, and uh, the lake of fire, which is uh, some place, I believe it's an, an infinity kind of place, out because the Bible says those, the sinners, the death and hell will be cast into some place, outer, outer, out of, you know, out of this place. Because heaven and, death, uh, and the new heaven and the new earth, there will be no, <clears throat> there will be no this kind of, uh, uh, the, the issues that we're seeing right now. 
because all those issues and sin and uh, and uh, and lies and uh, all those evil people will be cast away to the outer side okay but we will have a new heaven and a new earth so when the bible speaks about the this heaven and this earth will pass away you have to understand that the method of this world's destruction it's already revealed how this world will end it will pass away and the method of how it will pass away is already revealed in second peter 3 10. second peter 3 10 here it says but the day of the lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up seeing that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversations and godliness looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of god wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the element shall melt with fervent heat now my friends knowing that this earth will be destroyed this much and there is nothing which will remain not even your house not even your car not even your money not even anything don't you have a reason to live for god don't you have a reason to think and say oh god please i need you because for sure this world will be will be destroyed everything because god told us he told us heaven and earth will pass away but my words will never pass away Everything that I've told you is going to happen. It's going to happen. Remember, do you remember Noah's flood? In Noah's day, the world was destroyed with water. But God promised to send more global floods. Okay? He promised that I will send more global floods. Huh? I will send them. <laughs> See this. Genesis 9 verses 11. You think God did not say that? And when God talks about flood, it doesn't only mean water. He means something is coming. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off anymore by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there be any more be a flood to destroy the earth. Okay? He said, this flood of the water, okay, this flood of the water, it will never happen, that kind of flood. But if you check in the Bible, there are so many places where the Bible is talking about flood. It means there's another kind of flood which will come. And it's a flood which will going to destroy the earth. But I'm not talking about water. It is a flood of fire which is going to come. Look at all these places where the Bible is talking about flood. Okay, let me just get, get away from Genesis because you'll say, Oh, Keith, you're talking about the flood of Noah. Okay, let me show you. Oh, look, all these, the ones in red are all about flood. Hmm? Look, but with an overrunning flood, he will make an utter end of the place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemies. Hmm? Look at this. Uh, look here. And the Lord God of hosts is he that touches the land, and it shall melt. You see, the land is melting, and all that dwell therein shall mourn, and shall rise up holy like a flood, and shall be drawn by the flood of Egypt. You see, there's another flood which is coming. And I don't want to take much time on this, but just go and uh, if you love using a blue letter Bible, you can go and check. You will see flood and just read it all the way, all the way till Revelation and you will see flood, 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 flood. So it means there's another flood which is going to come and it will be the flood of fire. Remember the Bible talks about this and it says this earth will be destroyed by fire. Now, the prophet Isaiah foretold the passing away of heaven and earth too. He said in the book of Isaiah 34 verse 4 that all the stars in the skies will be dissolved and the heavens scrolled up like a scroll and the starry host will fall like withered leaves from the vine and shivered figs from the fig tree. You remember in Isaiah 34 4? He said that this everything will be, will, will be you know, will wither out, will be rolled like a scroll and you have to understand that the lord assured his people god assured 100 percent. he assured his people something that 
even as the heavens and the earth are passing away, his salvation is very secure. His salvation is very secure. Okay? Remember, in the book of Isaiah 51, verse 6, let me just read this one. Isaiah, Isaiah uh, 51, verse 6. Look at this. It says, Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax cold, old like garment, and they that dwell, dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation, look, see assurance, but my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Salvation will be forever. You know what the Bible says about sinners? What does the Bible call sinners? He calls them the dead. The dead. But you are, you are alive in Christ. The Bible tells us, in Christ you have life. So it means, if you believe in Christ, you will not, you will not perish with this world which is about to perish. Because anyone who is dead... Remember the Bible says, the dead, dead, death and hell was cast into the lake of fire. That is the flood. You remember what I was telling you. It was cast out into that flood. It was destroyed in that flood of fire. Death and hell. Death is who? Death is anyone who is not a believer. But you are alive in Christ because you have salvation. Because Jesus told us that his words will never pass away. Are you believing in the word? Are you believing in the promise of God? Are you believing in the salvation of God? And you have to understand, knowing that heaven and earth, okay, knowing that heaven and earth will pass away, it gives us a perspective in life. We are supposed to know that this world, this world that we are living in is not our home. And we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells, like I've read to you in 2 Peter 3, uh, 13. We are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness will dwell. And Jesus tells us to have the proper priorities. Let's have proper priorities. What are the priorities that we should have? You see people now are chasing and building, putting treasures for themselves in this earth. And they say, oh, I love two bankers. I'm seeing those rich people, especially in America right now. Uh, the gates of hell and these other fellas. Eh? They, they are building bankers and they are saying, oh, let's, let's put now, let's be safe, let's be safe. Because when the apocalypse comes and these things come, let, let's build ourselves, let's put some food in those bankers and let's... Come on, where should you be putting your treasures? In heaven. Put your treasures in heaven. Where moth and rust cannot, cannot destroy. But if you keep your treasures here on earth, what do you expect? They are going to be destroyed. Because the Bible tells us very clearly, Matthew 16, 19 to 20, go and read there. It all speaks about do not store yourselves treasures on earth. Store yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy. And also, Peter, after reminding us of the temporary nature of this world, he says, dear friends, in, the, in 2 Peter 3, 14, Dear friends, since you're looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless and blameless at the peace and, uh, and uh, be found at peace with Jesus Christ when he comes. My friends, are you looking forward to this earth which is going to be destroyed? Are you enjoying this, uh, uh, where is that photo here? Here. Are you thinking about this earth? Are you enjoying this earth which is going to be destroyed? Are you so much held in this world? Are you, are you, are you confused and you're saying, Oh, I'm, I'm going to build a, a, some one beach house. You know, people are saying, Oh, I will build myself a beach house. I build one a house in the, in the woods. I, 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 pull, I build another house in the city. You know, I love some houses and I, some good treasures. I build some... Uh, I'll buy 10 cars and I'll buy a private jet. It's okay. If you have all those things, it's fine. God is it's not a sin to have a private jet. But my friends, you know where you're supposed to store your treasures. 
because this world will be destroyed. Jesus told us, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. What are we supposed to be doing now? Preaching the gospel, telling others that, hey guys, don't, don't put your hope in this world. This world is fading. This world is going. Put your hope and trust in Jesus through the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news about what Jesus did for us. What did Jesus do? Jesus died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. He died for our sins. He didn't die for nothing. He died for our sins. How did he die? By shedding of his blood. Every drop of his blood was shed down. Why? Hebrews, the book of Hebrews tells us, without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. If Jesus could have died any other manner, drowning in water, electrocution, strangling, whichever way that you may think, I don't think there could be salvation. Because the Bible says without shedding of blood, there could be no salvation. He had to shed his blood. Why blood? Because Leviticus 17.11 tells us that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given you the blood upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that atones for the soul. And it's not just any other blood. It is the blood of an innocent being. You're not innocent. I am not. We have sinned in different times. We have lied. We have uh, been corrupt. We have killed people. We have fornicated. We have done all those kind of weird stuff. But it's only one person who has never done anything. Because for us, we have done everything wrong. And the wages of sin is death. We are supposed to die. But 2,000 years ago, one man came up called Jesus. While he was still sinners, Christ died for us. So that if you believe in him, you'll not perish, but you'll have everlasting life. All you need to do is believe in Jesus Christ. Change your ways. Believe in Jesus Christ. Change your mind. Actually, repentance means change your mind. And after you understand and you believe, all you need to do is tell Jesus what you believed. Tell him, Christ, I now understand that you died for my sins. You were buried and you rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I believe in you and I receive that atonement, that payment of sin by faith. And once you do that, my friends, you are saved, sealed and sanctified unto the day of redemption. Hope this has been a blessing to you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And also you can share the video to other people so that they can hear the word of God. You can also subscribe to watch more videos and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any new video. And also in the description below, we have a couple of other channels. Just go and click to the links and see what we have there. And also share to your friends. God bless you and have a great and blessed time.